Meatpacking is, um, work on a meatpacking line is distasteful. Uh, you are in the business of turning the live animal into meat. Um, and there are two large workforces, two large floors. One is slaughter, where the animal is brought in and killed and eviscerated and skinned and uh, divided into a, uh, a side of beef, if we're talking about a beef plant. Uh, then, the, then it's chilled for about a day, and then it goes into what's called the processing or fabrication floor, where it's broken down. Uh, the the uh, carcass is cut up into uh, either the, uh, really the cut right before the retail cut. Um, and, um, and so, though, and so the um, meatpacking is uh, a low profit margin industry. That means it, um, it makes its money really by, um, by efficiency, by getting as much product out the door, as they say in meatpacking, as possible. And so what that means is the, the line speed, the number of animals processed per unit of time, uh, goes as fast as they can make it. So for a beef plant, uh, they will, uh, the line will run at between 350 to a little over 400 head an hour, depending on whether you leave the bones in or take them out, and that depends on who, who is buying the, that product. For hogs, um, which are smaller and more uniform, uh, it's about 1,000 hogs an hour. For chickens, um, which are also even much smaller, five or six pounds per bird, and also very uniform, uh, it can be 200 birds a minute. So the line moves very fast. Workers usually get a, a break uh, about two and a half hours into their shift. And then they get a lunch break, about 15 minute break. And then they get a lunch break of about 30 minutes. Um, in a beef plant, the breaks come when the person who starts the process, called the knocker, who stuns the animal, steps off of his workstation and goes on break. And then as the hole in the line goes down, then you step off and you go get your break. When the next animal comes through, you have to be back on the line. Um, floors are slippery. Uh, people are working with knives and saws. Um, and so it's a, dangerous, um, it's a dangerous occupation. In fact, for um, much of the last uh, quarter of the 20th century, meatpacking was the most dangerous industry in America. Uh, it still is, and while injury rates have come down, uh, thanks to uh, more attention pay paid to that, there were a lot of uh, meatpacking firms were fined very heavily in, in the 1990s because injury rates had gotten really out of hand. And so they've made the workplace more safe, they've introduced ergonomics, um, and so injury rates have come down in meatpacking, in manufacturing in general. Uh, but still, meat and poultry uh, processing uh, injury rates are about four times the average manufacturing rate. So injuries are, uh, plants are not particularly lethal. People do die in meatpacking plants, but it's not all that common. But the injuries are largely uh, primarily uh, because of repetitive motion. And so you're doing the same thing thousands and thousands and thousands of times a day. And so it leads to things like uh, carpal tunnel uh, syndrome, for example. Also lacerations, uh, falls, other kinds of things. And um, so, it's a, it's, so what happens is workers uh, are more likely to be injured early on when they're just learning the job. There is new hire training, but it's, um, you generally learn your job on the line next to somebody who's doing it. Uh, you don't want the, if you're a meatpacking firm, you don't want to be doing, paying two people to do the job of one. So pretty quickly, that person who's training you is is gone, and you're on your own, and you have to, what's called pull your count. You have to do the job. Um, you have to keep up with the people in front of you and the people downline from you. Early on, you're you're more likely to be injured because you're not used to it. Um, Meatpacking uh, depends really on sharp instruments, sharp knives. Keeping a knife sharp is, is a skill that is very hard to learn. And um, so 
people are often injured early on. Uh, those who get used to it and, and, and accommodate to it will, it eventually wears your body out. Um, I had a friend who worked in the, on the uh, kill floor of the IBP plant in Finney County. He worked there for eight years and he managed to stay on the job because he kept moving to different jobs which would use different muscles. And when a job becomes open, you can bid on it. And if you are successful, and not, you don't pay for it, but you, you say, I'd like to have that job. And if you can do it, then you, that's the only way you can really increase your pay. Um, and it also then allows you to use different muscles. And so he worked there for eight years. Uh, his wife uh, told me that when he woke up in the morning, he sounded like snap, crackle, and pop, that all of his joints were making all these noises because he had, uh, it had been so hard on his body.